she was the number two for uh, Patterson. And they were the one giving me a lot of talent. I saw it as a power struggle. Yeah. But it's like, um, he didn't understand my concept. But because at the end of the day, where is Ghana welfare now? Even the only one at Ghana welfare is collapsed. <laughs> Beloved, uh, today to welcome you to Akrobia Media. Akrobia Media today, we've got one of our, our the biggest men in uh, Antwerp. This man, he have a lot to tell us. Just take your seat, relax, and listen to what he have for us. But before then, if you are not yet subscribed to our channel, I beg of you to just subscribe to Akrobia Media. So now, help me to welcome our daddy. Okay, daddy, I welcome you to Akrobia Media. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, in fact, I must say mm. I'm honored to have you on my show okay yeah, because since i've been trying to get you but uh, because due to uh, because of time factor yeah and then today god's grace here we are okay. so i welcome to Korea media all right thank you <laughs> yeah it's with time because these days i've shuttled between ghana and brajon so belgium so that's why some most of the time you don't get me here uh, sometimes I'm in Ghana, sometimes I'm here, so that's why uh, it's possible, yeah. That means something else is going on in Ghana, or...? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. I've started a hotel business in uh, okay. Akimoda. Okay. And it's functioning very well. Oh. So, uh, yes, I need to go and supervise or monitor what is okay. going on. So even this one, I'll be leaving on Friday wow. back to Ghana. What? Yeah, I opened it officially. Uh, we are now, uh, that is 2020 20 December. Oh. So we worked the whole year 2021. Oh. And we are now in the third month. So you can say it's one and a half, one year, three months busy. So wow. it's, 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 it's working then, already. How were you coping during the corona time last year? That time, 2020, you're talking about? Well, uh, yes, at the beginning, you see, when I say um, 20 December, mm -hmm. uh, actually, the ease the situation a bit from March last year, 2021. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we were only getting guests uh, who were organizing party, uh, wedding, uh, funerals. Yeah. yeah, but so yes, the corona affected uh, the number of people coming. Mm -hmm. But uh, we opened at a time that we, they were easing the situation okay. a bit so but uh it made it to go slowly it started slowly but now just really uh, picked up oh yes i am kweku boama achampo uh currently well you can say you know me maybe as the president, president. of ghana council yeah, we, we the, 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 the ghana okay. community mm -hmm. uh, i've been here for some time mm -hmm. uh i do i come from akima Yiribi in the eastern region of Ghana. Oh, the same place with Akroboto. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. He knows me well. We, we went to school even together. You and Akroboto went to school together? Yeah, wow. he was, uh, his uh, uh, primary education, I had one year mm -hmm. at Ayribi and he was there. Oh. I think he was a year behind me. Yeah, okay. yeah so he knows me well. We too, even, uh, on, even my hotel at Oda, he made the advert for me. He made a jingle for me. We were just running. Oh. Yes, it's being run at a radio station at Oda. Okay. At Chimoda. You, um, in fact, I went to a lot of different schools when I was young because I was living with my uncle. Uh, he was moving from place to place. So I had the first uh, four year at my father's place. It's called Achim Jedem. Mm -hmm. And then I went one year, class five at Ayribi. And then from there, I went to stay with my uncle at Sunyani. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went to High Street Experimental in Sunyani uh, one year. And then I, we, he was transferred to Kintampo. I did one year there. I went to uh, Tebubu. I did one year. Mm -hmm. But I completed uh, the middle school at Birikum. Well. Birikum, uh, praise be continuation. So yeah, that was my elementary education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to secondary school at Achim Suedru Secondary School, mm -hmm. Akis. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I went to sixth form at uh, Kumasi Academy. Oh, 
Yeah, so I went to Kumaka for Kumaka. lower seas and upper seas. Which, uh, yes, Kumaka okay. in uh, Kumasi Academy. I was a science student. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Science I was a science student. student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then tight. Yeah. So from there? And then I traveled, uh, went to Libya for a short while before okay. coming to Belgium. With your own? You travel by yourself or? No, you it was some arrangement, a uh, particular job. We went straight in to do some work there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was an uh, a, a organized trip. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, at that time, yeah. Right. So you finished sixth form in Ghana? Yes, yes. And then from there, did you do anything there? Like working? Like doing something? Do some small teaching. Okay. Yeah, teaching a short teach? while, while at uh, in Accra for a short while. And then before I traveled oh, right. oh, to Belgium. To Belgium. To Belgium was 86, yes. 86? Yes. All right. You tell us the story at 86 in Belgium. How was it? Well, uh, 86, that is how many years now? Let's say about 36 years ago. Eh? That's a long time. Uh, at that time, I think the Belgians were not used to a lot of uh, blacks. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, it was quite tough. Um, I think uh, at that time, even to get a job, uh, it was quite difficult, but fortunately, I think the real uh, the interim bureaus that we know now, mm -hmm. that was the beginning of it, okay. around eighty seven, eighty eight. That was when the interim officers started, where they could recruit mm -hmm. someone and then send you to a factory. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But basically, for me, I wanted to do further studies. Okay. That was my idea of actually traveling outside Ghana. My first, in fact, option was to go to Canada for further studies. Mm -hmm. uh, and something happened that I had to uh, stop over here in Belgium, but I was en route to Bel uh, Canada, Canada because I had some friends that we planned together. Some of them are still there. Oh. Uh, so the idea was that I was going to um, f go for further studies there. So when I came, basically, my idea, my point was not purposely going to work in immediately. Mm -hmm but was to, to go for schooling. Uh, but then, of course, you need to get your papers in order. And also Belgium being a Dutch-speaking country, mm -hmm. or Netherlands, and then French, uh, you need to master uh, one of these languages before you could continue. Yeah. Uh, normally, for second degrees masters, you could enroll in English. There were some courses in English, but like philosophy, so because those of us who were there at that time, uh, they enrolled at uh, KU uh, Leuven for philosophy okay. for your first degree, and you know that then you could go do other things. But I was interested in the philosophy, and so um, I thought I would go through the Belgian system. Okay. So um, I worked for some short time, and then I started schooling. Okay. I studied the language, and then I went. Then I actually changed from my science because initially I wanted to do pharmacy mm -hmm. uh, and then this, uh, it was a bit difficult at that time. So then I moved into accountancy. So that I studied accountancy here in Belgium. All right. okay. mm -hmm. Before you got that job you're talking about or before you continue your education, how was the, the documentation issues? Well, <laughs> I think yeah, you have said something is there. Uh, that was not easy. That was not easy because we had to, yeah, go through a whole process. But uh, I don't know. I cannot disclose uh, on yeah. on the media yeah. Uh, yeah. what yeah, actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to know is before mm -hmm. you, you left Ghana, yeah, so you came here. You, went, you said you wanted to go to Canada. Yes. Yes. And yeah. about because of something, you came here. Yeah. Which means that you you didn't come here as a student in Belgium. Uh, not in the beginning. No. Not the beginning. No. Yes. Because when you get you you get re registered. In the school, like so those guys mm -hmm. who were at uh, doing philosophy, mm -hmm. then you can get a short stay mm -hmm. for your studies. But then you have to pay for everything yourself. Mm -hmm. So there was this kind of combination. You have to work a little, or you have to work small to pay for or whatever uh, you want to do. Okay. Uh -huh. Then it's not, it's, it's not like you came as a student on a scholarship. No. Mm -hmm. Then you have to do everything on your own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm asking this because uh, I've had conversation like this also with uh, our own Charlie P. Yeah. Charlie P, he, the way he was talking, he, he was so, when he came here, normally he had an idea of 
further his education. Yeah. But according to him, because the friends that he met, yeah, the people that he mingled with, that those people uh, couldn't allow him to do what he wanted to do. So yeah. I want to ask you the same question: Why didn't you mingle with those people? Then later you decided to further your education. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it depends on the people. Yes, that you meet mm -hmm. at that, or we met at the time. Uh, I was focused. I, I mean, I had the objective of uh, traveling outside for further studies. So I was concentrating on that. So even where I stayed, I stayed at um, Antwerp South, mm -hmm. where we actually have a lot of students there at okay. Monty. So we were going, uh, a friend of mine, we were going to the cafes and the places where we have students. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it, it, I, it kept that education concept in you. Mm -hmm. When we came, yes, it was difficult to get some job, but if you're able to get some, uh, something to do, of course, at that time, the money that you received compared to Ghana, mm -hmm. you will be very happy. Yeah. So there is a temptation mm -hmm. that you continue to work to get money. Yeah. So many of the guys concentrated on the money outside. I must tell you, when uh, it became known to certain people mm -hmm. that I was feeding my studies or I was going to school, they said, oh, no, he can't do anything. What can he do? What is the education for? Mm -hmm. We came here to find money. Mm -hmm. why, 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 why do you have to say you want to study? You see? So it did. Where the people were meet, meeting mm -hmm. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. if you, you mingle yourself with those ones, of mm -hmm. course, you stop. You do not think about going to school. Yes. Yeah, but so I stayed. In fact, the, uh, there was a, p a time that I stayed away from the Ghanaian community or with certain friends for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was staying only at the Antwerp out there. People didn't know me. Mm -hmm. I would just come for a while to buy one or two things and then go back because I was what working and studying at the same time. So I needed time. I, when you, are, you come back from work, you are tired, or you have to do your studies. So there was no time just to come and sit in a cafe and be chatting with people, that kind of stuff, yes. So that was a little bit. People got to know me only when I had finished the first uh, degree, uh, and then I started working as an accountant, uh, and then I started coming to the Ghanaian community more gradually. And that is even when I got to, um, I started organizing people along the associations in the year around the 90s, 92, and then we form associations. That is when people got to know me. Great. Yeah. So what, what, which job was your first job? What did you graduate? Where did you go to the Where did you work first? No, I was lucky. <clears throat> you know, for, for the studies, I was working in a, a, a factory which was making bicycles, wheels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, in the beginning, uh, I was trained immediately to drive the forklift. So when the things came, came on the rollers, I would drive and lift them onto the machine. Mm -hmm. But then very soon, I think the guy talking with me, the, the supervisor, mm -hmm. he saw that I was at a, at a different level. Mm -hmm. So he moved me to the quality session. Mm -hmm. So I was testing the, the strength of those pipes, yeah, of the bicycles. So I, I did it for two years or three years. So, and then I was at the second year, because the course is actually three years. And then whilst I was talking with, I, okay, I had some white girl friends here and there. So one of them introduced me to a guy and, uh, and uh, he said, oh, you are doing accountancy. We have an organization. I think it would be good if you can start working. Mm -hmm. So even before I finished, I completed, they employed me. Uh, as an accountant in that organization. And that's where I stayed for 31 years. 31 years? Yes, I worked with that same organization for 31 years, wow. yes. Okay, yeah. in the beginning, in yeah. the beginning, as we said, uh, Belgium people were not used to blacks at that time. Yeah. And then you came to get a position like that as an accountant. Yeah. Was there any challenges there in the working places? Well, you see, I, I had some advantages uh, because... I did French at Form 5, eh, 1 to 5. Uh, so I had some knowledge of French. And then I came to study the Dutch. And then, of course, I speak English. 
So those three elements were very important for my appointment because I was working in Brussels. Okay. In Brussels, you, have, you should be able to speak French. French. Okay. So there were other candidates, mm -hmm. but when it happened that uh, as a black man or a foreigner who had made this effort to mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, you know, steady hard, the man gave me, you can say it as a positive discrimination, where he gave me the opportunity to work. Challenges uh, or difficulties, I think, at that time, I, I had not mastered the Dutch very well uh, because uh, Dutch is, you know, it's very, uh, it's quite uh, difficult or, yeah. So, um, later on, I mean, you have to present your fi financial statements or you have to prepare things, go to uh, a board meeting or a council, general council meeting and present your uh, your budget for the year for the organization, presented uh, your report and all these things. And all those things have to be done in Dutch. And before then, you have to put it on paper, write it. So, but I had very good colleagues who were prepared to correct my Dutch before the presentation. So, I mean, I made them to know that, of course, I was studying and I was not yet mastered in Dutch. So when I finished any document, I present to one or two friends who were all the time prepared to make the necessary corrections before I go to the board meetings or the council meetings. Yes. You were able to organize some Ghanaians here. Yeah. What, <coughs> get, what triggered you or what happened that you decided to organize Ghanaians? Okay. Um, there are two levels. Eh? First of all, we realized that uh, um, the Ghanaians themselves after staying for some two, three years, we realized that uh, some were getting lonely. And uh, you were left on your own. If you had some problems, uh, yeah, you, there were some people who could help you. But because they had also not studied the system, uh, they couldn't give you the necessary advice, you see, and, and or even linking you to particular jobs and that kind of stuff. So. First of all, we saw that people were trying to organize themselves. I'm talking about 1992, uh, when, uh, yes, and then I think 93, the first association started in, uh, in Brussels, that some Ghanaians came together to form an association. What's the name? Uh, we, uh, it's called the Goodwill Association. Formerly, it was called Bakwan Konam. Okay. They were just friends. And they said, uh, oh, I mean, they, sometimes they don't like it that I use the phrase, but it's like people who knew each other. They said, oh, why don't we come together so that if we, one gets a problem, we can help the other. Mm -hmm. And then when they started, and then they tried to form a Ghanaian association too, for all Ghanaians, mm -hmm. but then it didn't work. It couldn't work. Mm -hmm. So we saw that Ghanaians could organize themselves along the communities where they come from. Uh, I mean, we saw the Ghanaian school organized as uh, Ocheman, Ashantis, uh, Ocheman, Bron Hafu, Okwo, and those started emerging. And I remember between 93 and 96, most of them did their inauguration and they were, became big. So then, um, around that time, I have finished the accounting, so I did some studies on organizational development and uh, as also a postgraduate thing. Um, then I saw that, yeah, okay, you can't leave these uh, associations. We are all Ghanaians at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but you can't just go to a Belgian man and say, I am from Ochiman Union or I am from Asantima Union. No, yeah. the man only knows Asant um, Ghana. Ghana yeah. So then the idea came, why don't we try to get one big Ghanaian organization mm -hmm. where uh, we all be part but these organizations they have their own organizations mm -hmm. already so then the idea is to build something above yeah. an umbrella organization mm -hmm. and that is where I started that one in 97 1997 oh. when I got involved trying to bring these associations form what we called at that time we call it Ghana Ba mm -hmm. it's like a child born from Ghana mm -hmm. So we, we started educating them. But it, it was very tough because some of them didn't understand the concept. 
because somebody will say, yeah, I have my own organization. Yeah. Why should I go under, under somebody? Under yeah. somebody. That was the concept. Somebody will say, why should I go under uh, somebody's umbrella? No, I have to be on my own. Mm -hmm. But it was to educate them more and more and say, look, mm -hmm. it's not that uh, you are coming under me, yeah. but it's just that we are trying to group ourselves together. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started. So I actually started in 97 and it took a lot of time. Um, I worked hard. There were, I wanted to meet the criteria from the Belgian government, which gives subsidy to people because I wanted to have a secretariat for the organization so that somebody will be working from the office to assist the Ghanaians. But to have a secretariat, you need to, you, you need to uh, meet certain criteria. Uh -huh. So uh, there were a lot of things. You need to have a publication. You have to publish a magazine. I was doing that on my own. Um, you had to conduct educational activities. And I did that uh, up to the year 2000. And then fortunately, uh, we submitted a proposal to the Flemish government and they said, oh, okay, uh, we see that you are doing some work, so we want to help. But as I was telling you, at that time, there was a criteria that if you have 20 organizations mm -hmm. under you as an umbrella, then they, they were ready to pay you one full-time staff okay. to work for you. Okay. But if you have only 10, between 10 and 20, you get one part-time. Okay. But at that time, there were already 23, oh, no, no, there were about, uh, there were 18 organizations, Ghanaian organizations already. Whoa. Yeah. But some of them didn't accept, they didn't want it. Uh, they didn't understand the concept of that. So, when we, we, we did the application, we had only 12, 12 organizations. So they gave us part time. And that was when I employed one lady called Krit. She is still working with us, but in a different uh, uh, portfolio now because we have moved forward. After forming the Ghana Council, the umbrella, we were able to also form an African Federation. Okay. And that lady is still working for the Federation now. We even went to a meeting yesterday. And we have six staff members now working right. all for Ghanaians or for Africans. Okay. Work as Ghana Council, no, Ghana Bar up to 2010, mm -hmm. when we were trying to form the, um, the Federation for the Africans. Mm -hmm. But at that time we were recognized, you know, as Ghana, mm -hmm. Ga Ghana Bar. So, but then you can't put Nigerians, Cameroonians, and other ones as Ghanaians. So we had to change the name. So we formed a new one we called uh, FAB. Federation of Anglophone Africans in Belgium. We formed that one. And then because we had to transfer legally, transfer our recognized the status of the, the legal status and the, the the what is it? The recognition that we had, the, the you can call it like the dossier, the whole file, and pass it on to the African. We couldn't keep that name. Then we formed, we we made it Ghana Council, okay. which is actually which reflects the, the content actually well always reflects the real meaning because it's like a council where we ask the various associations to delegate three people to the council so we form it like an, a parliament okay. so then the name council was more suitable yeah. and then, so we started with the Ghana council around 2010 and as of now yes we are still functioning as Ghana council only for the Ghanaians and then uh, we have moved from the Federation of African, uh, Anglophone Africans. Now it has become a federation for all Africans in Belgium, and it's called Sanka. So that one is also there, and uh, I am still the the founding president of that uh, federation too, together with the the Ghana Council. Good. Well done. Yeah. So thank right. you. Yeah. So um. When did the uh, Ghana welfare also came into this existence? Yes, Ghana welfare, it was around the 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yes, 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 you have, you have hinted me. Um, that was, I think, 97 there. That was when we were trying to form the Ghana Bar, mm -hmm. where we wanted to bring the associations together. Mm -hmm. It was Ghana welfare which was giving us a lot of trouble or which was uh, making it difficult for us. Why? Because they had a different strategy. They thought that Ghana welfare was, you, you have to bring the individuals together. 
as far as you are a Ghanaian, you belong to the Ghana welfare. And their idea was to form Ghana welfare in the different cities. Like the most one that we know is Ghana welfare Antwerp. Mm -hmm. So they formed the Ghana welfare Antwerp. And at that time, their leader was called uh, Berkun, um, Patterson. Patterson, yes. He was opposed to the Ghana, Ghana Bar umbrella group okay. because he thought that he could also get to the Ghanaians mm -hmm. by former Ghana Welfare Antwerp, Ghana Welfare Brussels, mm -hmm. Ghana Welfare, um, what is that, uh, Leuven, Liege, that kind of concept. Mm -hmm. But I saw that that one couldn't work because you can't just say somebody is a Ghanaian so you, you can group the people together because we have different mentalities. Mm -hmm. We have different educational backgrounds. We have different cultural backgrounds. So you can't just uh, put somebody there and say he's a Ghanaian. So he has to be part of that group. But I saw that we should rather allow people to form their own organizations, like the Ochimine, like the Asante Mine, and even um, the Bakwankunam, there were people, or people, if Ghanaians in Liège want to form, fine. Let them form those ones, but then try to form a federation on top of it, that you, you bring in the individual, um, what is that, delegates, yeah. so that when you discuss anything, they will yeah. take it to the organization. Also, also, also. So he didn't understand my strategy. Okay. Uh, so he was thinking, no, no, we want to bring everybody under us. So the, it was a serious battle. Mm -hmm. It was a, yeah, 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 we even, we went several times to the embassy where the, the ambassador had to come in to understand the dynamics, what was happening, because they saw it as a conflict. And Berwick was the number two for uh, Patterson. And they were the one giving me a lot of challenge.